provided to council on this issue. Uh, all of the correspondence that we have received up until today have been uh, provided to council. So the purpose of, of the hearing is to provide an opportunity for the public to address council regarding the amendments under consideration. Uh, a public hearing is a requirement of the Municipal Government Act when considering amendments to our planning documents. Uh, as uh, the Mayor has indicated, Council cannot consider new information after the public hearing. Uh, council has given direction uh, to staff to consider specific amendments to our planning documents. So this is not a public hearing on the development permit that was issued at 329 Main Street. So the amendments that are being considered tonight, I'm just going to go through them. So with our municipal planning strategy, uh, what's being considered is an amendment to part 9.2, which is the preamble to the central commercial designation. Uh, and the wording that is proposed to be inserted is to help enhance and strengthen the downtown central commercial district craft beverage uses of a certain size that are approved as an accessory use to a permitted use or uses will be facilitated by permitting off-site sales of product produced on site. Uh, there's a second amendment to the Municipal Planning Strategy uh, in Part 9.2.3 uh, to add the following bullet and it discusses craft beverage uses uh, of a certain size, accessory to a permitted use of uses where offset sales of the beverage are permitted. Within the land use bylaw, uh, the primary amendment is to the actual definition of accessory use uh, and it's deleting the existing definition and replacing it with um, the definition that you can see here, and the main change here is that the words explicitly devoted have been removed. So the uh, definition reads, uh, the use of land or building or portion thereof customarily incidental and subordinate to the principal use of the land or building and located on the same lot. Uh, amending the land use bylaw in part 12 to include the following at the end of part 12.1, and this is uh, really to deal with the issue of contract brewing, which came up as part of uh, our planning advisory committee discussion on this issue. So if a development permit is issued for a property that permits a craft beverage use, as an accessory use, the equipment and facilities on the property used for the production of the craft beverage may not be used to produce craft beverages by or for anyone other than the owner of the equipment and facility. So I just want to go through, through some background. Uh, the How we got here, uh, this started in September with the judicial review that was done on uh, the property at 329 Main Street. Uh, the decision was upheld for a development permit uh, for a restaurant, retail, and accessory brewery, but did state uh, off-site sales for any accessory use are not permitted under the current land use bylaw. Uh, the options were requested by council in October on how to move forward with the judicial review decision, uh, including enforcement and better and better enabling the craft beverage industry. So at this time, there was recognition that Annapolis Cider Company uh, is already doing off-site sales and has accessory use, and that they were notified at this time. Uh, council then directed staff in November to proceed with the option of plan amendments that would provide clear parameters for craft beverage operating. Um, so you can see on the sort of timeline, that's when the amendments were initiated back in October, November. Uh, in December, uh, our planning advisory committee held a public participation meeting, um, as is required when considering plan amendments, and considered uh, an amendment package that would allow off-site sales for accessory uses, but also introduce a framework, definitions, and other clauses to clarify how the craft beverage industry could operate in the town. Uh, the PAC recommended to council that the issue be sent back to them with additional information at this time. Uh, in January, at Committee of the Whole, Council considered the uh, recommendation of Planning Advisory Committee and direction was provided uh, to separate the off-site sales of the Church Brewing and Apple Cider issue with the remainder of the amendments uh, that would return to the Planning Advisory Committee. So the staff took direction and prepared amendments based on the motion from January Committee of the Whole to uh, have a clear policy statement and a municipal planning strategy. Uh, amend the definition of accessory use to allow off-site sales and uh, deal with restricting contract brewing. At the February special council meeting, uh, council proceeded with first reading of the amendments and scheduled a public hearing again um, to deal with the, the same points that we've uh, just highlighted and the amendments that, that were read earlier. Um, <clears throat> so this whole process, just to summarize, um, have had multiple 
reports of staff, uh, varying perspectives provided to council. Um, again, council cannot consider new information after this hearing. Uh, and there will be uh, the opportunity for council to have second reading and make a decision tomorrow evening. Uh, a bit more on some of the concerns that we've heard. So we have provided comment on various questions that are found in the reports. Uh, and this public hearing is concerning these, these three uh, bullets that I've read. A couple of issues that I do want to highlight for this hearing. Uh, one is contract brewing, and we've uh, sort of continued to explore this issue uh, after first reading, and, and we've continued to gather information. Uh, at this stage, we, we would probably not recommend including this uh, as a portion of the amendments moving forward, uh, given the province is already regulating contract brewing. Uh, but this will be a decision point in the discussion uh, for council. On Sure, we'll hear perspectives on this issue this evening. Um, the issue of subordinate uh, and within the definition of accessory use is also um, a question I think it's worth talking about here. And so, we're staff, anyways, of the opinion that accessory use is um, having sort of three tests applied to the one being that it's customarily incidental to a permitted use. So, things like restaurants and retail uh, stores have been permitted in the downtown of Wolfville. Um, and the use that would be accessory to that has to be sort of reasonably um, accessory or reasonably associated with uh, that primary use. Um, also, the accessory use would have to be subordinate in size to the permitted uses. Um, and we feel that this, these two tests, uh, as being able to issue a development permit, uh, are an appropriate framework. Uh, the third test is what's an operation um, it's really key that the impacts of the accessory use remain subordinate, and this would be monitored. So essentially the accessory use cannot become the main use. Uh, that was the information we wanted to provide, and uh, I think I'll pass it back to the chair to continue with the public hearing. Thank you, Devin. So uh, again, um, there's a 10, uh, ten minute time, uh, we actually respect the 10 minutes so we can uh, have an opportunity for those who wish to address the uh, address council. This is not an opportunity so much for council to offer um, comment uh, or answer questions as it is for the public to address them and for their consideration tomorrow. So I'll open the floor. Yes? Is it possible to split the time? Pardon me? Let's say someone wants to speak for five minutes, and then maybe that's it, and then they... they then that's they, fine. Then they want to hear the rest of the people, and then there's something pops in their mind. Do they use the next five minutes, too? Well, we're going to deal with ten minutes as a maximum. Okay. Okay. Cumulative. Thank you. Well, I think ten minutes... Is, <laughs> we'll deal with that and see how many we have and, and where we are. So, um, so if anybody wants to address, we'd ask you to step down to the, uh, to the mic here to address council. And um, we'll open the floor for, uh, for comment. Good evening. I'm Karen McWilliam and I live at 6 Seaview. Tonight is a hearing, but most of you on council have stopped listening. Many members of council made up their minds months ago. I want to remind you that your duties as elected officials include listening to residents, considering the information carefully, and making decisions that are in the best interests of the town and all of its residents, not a select group. I'm really at a loss to understand how you could carefully consider the views expressed tonight and vote on the matter within 24 hours. However, your actions are entirely consistent with how you've handled this matter from the beginning. For reasons that have been clearly articulated since November 2017, I prepared a letter to the Minister of Municipal Affairs asking that the conduct of council and staff regarding this matter be investigated and that the province withhold approval of these changes should they be passed by council. My partner and I are the applicants who initiated the judicial review, which among other things indicated that the operation of an accessory use microbrewery must limit the sales of such beer produced to the site where the brewing occurred. The judgment rendered in the judicial review does not require any further action to achieve clarity. Mr. Justice Warner was perfectly clear in interpreting the town's own definition of accessory use, which does not permit off-site sales. 
We spent thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours of our time having this matter reviewed through appropriate legal channels, only to have the town of Wolfville spend the next six months attempting to make changes which have the effect of overturning the ruling of the Nova Scotia Supreme Court for the exclusive benefit 